At the end of September 2006, the United States officially retired hundreds of the world's first fourth-generation fighters. Despite their dedicated service to the United States military for 30 years, they were built not only for combat, but also for high-speed interception, allowing them to engage bombers quickly, counter escort fighters, and prevent nuclear weapons from being dropped on United States carriers. Do you know which fighter we are talking about? Yes, it is the F-14 Tomcat. A nuclear war never happened, the threat from the Soviet Union faded, and the high maintenance costs of these aircraft led the United States to retire them by destroying them completely, ending their legacy. But was it only the high maintenance costs that justified replacing the F-14? Or had the Americans discovered its weaknesses? It has been nearly 20 years since the F-14 disappeared from the United States military. Do you still remember its final flight? If you've forgotten, we will revisit that moment now and discuss the F-14's greatest strengths, ones that even modern fighters still struggle to surpass. The final flight. Why the F-14 Tomcat was retired despite pilot protests. Dick Cheney's pivotal decision in 1989 signaled the end for America's most formidable carrier-based fighter. The Secretary of Defense refused to approve more F-14D purchases, which limited production to just 37 aircraft. The Soviet Union's collapse changed defense spending priorities completely. The Navy faced growing pressure to cut operational costs as Cold War tensions eased. The F-14's last three years of service saw the remaining units deploy only to the Persian Gulf region to support United States forces in Iraq. Naval aviators hotly debated this transition. The Super Hornet was reliable but couldn't match the F-14's speed and air-to-air -air maneuverability. The biggest problem was the lack of an aircraft with similar radar capabilities and engagement range which raised concerns about carrier battle group safety. The F-A-18 EF Super Hornet emerged as a more cost-effective alternative, requiring only five to 10 maintenance hours per flight hour compared to the Tomcat's 40 to 60 hours. In addition to its lower maintenance demands, the Super Hornet offered several advantages, including advanced avionics systems, improved maintainability, and enhanced multi-role capabilities. The F-14's 2006 retirement created an unprecedented situation for surplus aircraft disposal. The Pentagon took extraordinary steps to keep F-14 components away from unauthorized hands, especially Iran's Air Force. The Defense Department planned to destroy only Tomcat-specific parts and sell common components. After finding out about Iran's active pursuit of F-14 parts through various channels, officials ordered the destruction of all retired airframes. This massive project involved locating 633 retired Navy Tomcats, utilizing specialized shredding machinery to dismantle them, and thoroughly inspecting all resulting scrap material. The Pentagon paid $900,000 to a contractor to destroy these historic aircraft systematically. Senator Ron Wyden pushed through legislation that banned F-14 component exports except to museums, creating unique restrictions on surplus military aircraft parts. The last F-14 ended its service with 4,958 flight hours and 1,188 carrier catapult launches. The Tomcat's retirement showed changing strategic priorities and budget constraints clearly. The Navy chose to put its resources into newer platforms that better fit evolving mission requirements as defense budgets shrank. But how scary are the maintenance costs for the United States to give up on a fighter that can strike terror into the skies? We'll get to that in the next section. But before that, would you give up something as great as the Tomcat because of its high cost? Share your thoughts in the comments. The Maintenance Nightmare Why Keeping Tomcats Flying Was So Difficult 
the F-14 Tomcat's impressive combat record came with a hefty price tag that led to its early retirement. These formidable fighters needed between 40 to 60 maintenance hours for each flight hour, creating a complex maintenance burden. Rising maintenance demands and escalating costs made sustaining the F-14 unsustainable, with each flight hour costing between $35,000 and $40,000. In contrast, the F-A-18 Super Hornet proved far more cost-effective, requiring just 5 to 10 maintenance hours per flight hour. The aircraft's complex avionics system further complicated upkeep, particularly the AWG-9 radar, which featured eight panels of circuit breakers resembling 1970s light bright games. Radar intercept officers had to handle these carefully, as incorrect selections could be fatal. Additional maintenance challenges included extensive corrosion control requirements, lengthy pre-flight inspections, and intricate weapons mounting systems. Rising maintenance demands and escalating costs made sustaining the F-14 unsustainable, with each flight hour costing between $35,000 and $40,000. In contrast, the F-A-18 Super Hornet proved far more cost-effective, requiring just 5 to 10 maintenance hours per flight hour. The aircraft's complex avionics system further complicated upkeep, particularly the AWG-9 radar, which featured eight panels of circuit breakers resembling 1970s light bright games. Radar intercept officers had to handle these carefully, as incorrect selections could be fatal. Additional maintenance challenges included extensive corrosion control requirements, lengthy pre-flight inspections, and intricate weapons mounting systems. The late 1990s saw increasing difficulty in maintaining the aging F-14 fleet. The final F-14D model, despite its better capabilities, became known for reliability problems and maintenance issues. The Navy moved up the Tomcat's retirement from 2010 to 2006 because of these growing maintenance burdens. The F-14 Tomcat's AIM-54 Phoenix changed the game in aerial combat. It packed the most advanced air-to-air -air missile system of its time with unmatched range and the power to take on multiple targets at once. This weapon reshaped naval aviation forever. The Phoenix Rising How the AIM-54 missile system changed air combat The F-14 Tomcat's AIM-54 Phoenix changed the game in aerial combat. It packed the most advanced air-to-air -air missile system of its time with unmatched range and the power to take on multiple targets at once. This weapon reshaped naval aviation forever. The AIM-54 Phoenix was the Navy's primary long-range air-to-air missile, capable of striking targets over 100 nautical miles away at speeds of up to Mach 5. Its unique launch sequence involved dropping from the aircraft before igniting its engine, climbing to 80,000 feet, and then using kinetic energy to dive toward its target. The F-14s and AWG-9 radar, combined with the AIM-54 Phoenix missile, formed a groundbreaking weapons platform unmatched by its predecessors. This advanced system could simultaneously track up to 24 targets while continuously scanning the skies, launch six missiles within just 38 seconds, and effectively engage multiple targets even in poor weather conditions. During the Cold War, Soviet bomber crews flying aircraft such as the Badger, the F-14 Tomcat, flew many classified missions that ranged from fierce aerial battles to strategic reconnaissance operations. These missions left an indelible mark on military aviation history in combat zones worldwide. Declassified, secret combat missions of the F-14 Tomcat.
the F-14 Tomcat flew many classified missions that ranged from fierce aerial battles to strategic reconnaissance operations. These missions left an indelible mark on military aviation history in combat zones worldwide. On August 19, 1981, two F-14s from VF-41, Black Aces, aboard USS Nimitz came face to face with a pair of Libyan Su-22 fighters about 60 miles north of the Libyan coast. The lead Libyan aircraft fired an AA-2 Atoll missile at the American fighters. Both F-14... By January 1991, five carrier-based F-14 squadrons had deployed to the Persian Gulf for Operation Desert Storm. Their primary missions included strike escorts to protect attack aircraft, combat air patrols to defend carrier battle groups, and fleet defense operations to Two Tomcats dodged at least 10 surface-to-air missiles from Syrian air defenses on December 3, 1983. F-14s encountered hostile fire again on December 14, but escaped unharmed. USS New Jersey responded to these provocations with naval bombardment. F-14s equipped with the tactical airborne reconnaissance pod system became a great way to get intelligence. Tomcats flew almost daily reconnaissance missions over Lebanon between November 1983 and mid-1984. These operations faced serious risks. Two Tomcats dodged at least 10 surface-to-air missiles from Syrian air defenses on December 3, 1983. F-14s encountered hostile fire again on December 14 but escaped unharmed. USS New Jersey responded to these pro During Operation Desert Storm, F-14s equipped with the tactical airborne reconnaissance pod system played a crucial role in intelligence gathering. They were instrumental in assessing battle damage, locating Scud missile launch sites, and tracking Iraqi military activities, providing vital information for coalition forces. F-14s managed to keep watch over Iraq through operations provide comfort, Southern Watch and Northern Watch after Desert Storm. These missions included combat air patrol, fighter escort, and air interdiction duties until the 2003 Iraq invasion. F-14 squadrons showed amazing adaptability in their final combat deployment. Beyond its legendary combat record, the F-14's legacy is also defined by the experiences of the pilots who flew it. From exhilarating dogfights to the challenge of mastering its advanced systems, those who sat in the cockpit have unique insights into the F-14 Tomcat's spacious cockpit welcomed pilots with a complex yet precise control system that needed physical strength and technical knowledge. A bubble canopy with four well-placed mirrors gave both crew members clear visibility. The wing sweep mechanism featured a single actuator per wing, capable of moving at eight degrees per second, a hollow aluminum alloy crossover shaft that ensured the wings remained synchronized and inflatable canvas bags that sealed gaps between the retracted wings and fuselage. Remarkably, during the Navy's 30 years of operations, there were only two crossover shaft failures, and both crews managed to land safely. The wing sweep mechanism featured a single actuator per wing, capable of moving at 8 degrees per second, a hollow aluminum alloy crossover shaft that ensured the wings remained synchronized, and inflatable canvas bags that sealed gaps between the retracted wings and fuselage. Remarkably, during the Navy's 30 years of operation, NASA test flights from 1979 to 1985 improved the F-14's high angle of attack performance. These changes helped reduce wing rock and made the aircraft more stable, 
though these upgrades only reach the F14D variant. Finally, to end today's video, we will talk about how the F-14 became known outside the military and became an icon loved by many people around the world. Combat pilots valued the F-14's adaptability in different situations. Swept back NASA test flights from 1979 to 1985, improved the F-14's high angle of attack performance. These changes helped reduce wing rock and made the aircraft more stable, though these upgrades only reached the F-14D variant. Finally, to end today's video, we will talk about how the F-14 became Hollywood's wingman, how Top Gun made the F-14 a cultural icon. The 1986 blockbuster, Top Gun, took the F-14 Tomcat beyond military circles and turned it into a cultural phenomenon that got audiences hooked worldwide. The movie became 1986's highest grossing film and secured Tomcat's place in the library of Jim Cash and Jack Epps Jr. wrote the screenplay based on Ehud Yane's Top Guns article from California Magazine. The F-14's stunning looks and unmatched capabilities made it the perfect choice for the Star aircraft. Real F-14 pilots helped with filming to make the aerial sequences authentic. These pilots became instant celebrities at bases all over America after the movie came out. The production team and the United States Navy worked hand-in-hand -hand to get genuine footage. Maverick's famous control tower flyby scene would normally lead to a court-martial without proper clearance. Veteran pilots say the movie got both classroom training and flying sequences at Top Gun Wright. Recruiters engaged directly with moviegoers in key cities like Los Angeles and Detroit leveraging the film's widespread appeal to capture the interest of potential candidates. By tapping into the excitement and inspiration generated by the movie, the Navy the team moved this F-14 over 500 miles to a Lake Tahoe airfield for filming. Tech crews worked hard to get basic functions working, especially the cockpit canopy. Navy personnel played a big role in making everything look authentic. 